Previously in round sailing, we sailed from the Caribbean coast in Colombia to the southeast border of Panama. Close to Panama, we got boarded by the Colombian Armada, but everything was fine and we arrived to Puerto Baldía just before sunset. Puerto Valdía is a tiny village just on the border to Colombia. Here it's possible to clear into Panama and get your cruising permit, which is valid for one year. We have been at one office already, which I'm not sure which one that was actually. Military. The military office. And now we're proceeding to immigration and then the maritime uh, Authority. We need to make some photocopies. Okay. Immigration and the port authority needed 20 copies in total of the boat papers and passports. But that was an easy fix since there was a copy shop just next door. It's 20 minutes past 11, so we've been at this at uh, two hours now, and we're still not ready with check in. Uh, we've done the military, we've done the customs, no, no immigration. immigration. Now we're going to do the maritime office to get the cruising permits, hopefully. Uh, so maybe we're ready before lunch? Yeah. <laughs> the immigration fee was $110 per person. The cost for the cruising permit and the SARPE was $197. So in total we paid $417 to clear into Panama, which is the most expensive clearance so far for us. We got the flag can hoist in the, on the boat, courtesy flag. We bought a few carrots, two uh, bottles of juice, some drink, $14. They had no fruits and all the vegetables they come from Colombia so prepare with food if you're going here and our cruising uh, guidebook said that this village is one of the best places in whole San Blas to buy groceries. This is what we found. So stock up well. Obaldea is a really quiet and sleepy little village. There is no cell phone coverage, and the internet is through a super slow satellite link at the only internet cafe. It's uh, yeah, really in the outback, but it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say really. <laughs> I don't know, not much to do here I guess. I guess the main attraction here is the surrounding jungle and the nature. And for us, I mean, the anchorage isn't very good, it's rolly. So I think we'll try to get out of here as fast as possible. <laughs> Before going back to Ron, we had to pay an anchorage fee of $10 per boat to the village. And we also gave the military police a copy of the SARPE and the cruising permit. After the military had come out to the boat to make an inspection, looking for drugs and contraband, we were free to go to our next anchorage. So we're trying to find Anchorage, it's, uh, it's not very easy, you don't really see the entrance to the bay but it's over there, so we just need to round some uh, underwater rocks and the rocks doesn't show on all the charts so it's a bit tricky and it's a bit late in the afternoon now so we don't have the sun so the water is just black so yeah really hard to see if there's any rocks just under the water here. So we'll go slow. So this is the entrance. So the village you see over here is an uh, indigenous village, uh, Gunayala. And it's about, I don't know, a kilometer from the where we're going to anchor. 
So we'll see if it's possible to take a walk over there. This anchorage is tricky. We can't even see where the anchorage is. It's like hidden behind here. You see how, how narrow the entrance is? And there are rocks all around. This is the only chart that we have. I really hope it's accurate. Uh, we, we have the paper chart as well. Yeah, but this is the most accurate paper chart. And the Navionics shows rocks everywhere. It doesn't show anything, so... We have to turn off now. But I think we should uh, steer manually. Yeah. There's supposedly rocks underneath the surface. Oof. Before dropping the anchor, we made a slow pass of the perimeter of the drop point to make sure we were free of rocks. Tänk så här en krokodil. Det är så som det. Pretty cool place. Yeah, definitely. Look at that view with the jungle and that village. And the clouds. And we dropped anchor at six. Under the keel or in total? Under the keel. Okay. So we have close to 30 meters of chain out, I think. Krista and I finished the day with a workout session while the boys drank beer in the cockpit. Gunayala is an autonomous territory in Panama and covers the coastline from the Colombian border in the east all the way to Punta San Blas and Porvenir in the west, which is the capital of the Comarca. You can see how many rocks that are lying around the bay and that we picked out a good spot. So this is the village uh, Pueblo Nuevo. It's home to around 250 people in uh, 35 houses, I think it was. And uh, yeah, this is the new village, as you can hear on the name. And further over there is a yeah, bit bigger village, which I think is the original village. But maybe they, we haven't checked that out yet, but maybe they grew out of it or some people just decided to move over to this area, closer to the bay. Been seeing a lot of people they go fishing in here with their canoes uh, where we're anchored. One of the main income for the Gunas is coconut export. Every coconut has an owner, so it's important not to pick them even if they are lying on the ground. The houses are made of sugarcane sticks for the walls and palm trees for the roofs. And every village has their own Saila, which is the chief of the village. This is Anachukuna. 
And here, this is a bigger village, here lives around 700 people in 250 houses. And nice by the sea. Really cute village. And everyone's super friendly. So they have solar panels uh, to some houses to give them electricity, like here. I really like these uh, dugout canoes made from one piece. Must be a hell of a job to drag that big log down from the forest. So this is the beach in uh, Anatrukuna. Unfortunately it's full of trash. So what we've seen is that it's a big problem with the trash. They, of course, they don't have any place to throw it, like good place to throw it where that you can recycle. So it looks like they just tend to throw everything in the water. But of course, everything goes back on the shore. It's very sad. It's full of plastic. Even when you walk inland, it's plastic. Swedish name, that's kind of weird. On it. Yeah. Anyway, we're walking back towards the anchorage now. take them off The man told us that it takes four days to build an ulo, which is pretty impressive. They cut the tree in the jungle and bring it in one piece to the village to start working. We just uh, left Porto Perme over there. That's pretty common here, there is no wind. So we're motoring today as well. But it's not very far today, it's uh, 12 nautical miles to the next anchorage up north here. Between uh, Porto Perme, it's been uh, really nice. The people there in the village uh, was really friendly and uh, yeah, it was a real experience.
We have arrived to our next anchorage and as we were coming in through the entrance there's kind of a narrow and shallow entrance at one point we only have 40 centimeters under the keel <laughs> we just had to leave the other place we we didn't want to because it was so nice uh, but the flies the noceums i haven't seen anything else before definitely the the worst I mean, yeah, we, we noticed it the first day in the evening. Okay, there are a little bit of uh, no seams, let's close down, but it was okay. Well, you think when the sun goes up that they disappear and during the day they're not there, but no. So the whole day yesterday, they, this no seams, they were there all the time and just going in inside the boat. So as it got darker before sun, before uh, sunset, uh, you, you couldn't be out, you couldn't stay outside and of course they all came inside and they're so small so you can hardly you can hardly see them so we even I put paper in the vents the small vents that we have to one in the bathroom one in the galley I don't know if it helped um, so we just felt that we had to leave that place sadly I think also had a little bit to do that there was no wind at all so our hopes were that next place we're gonna be better. I've already killed maybe 20 just sitting here in the cockpit and I'm not sure if they come from inside because now we have opened everywhere or if they're around us. I'm getting paranoid. Like the mosquitoes you can sometimes see when they sit on you and you can like get them away or kill them but these they as soon as they get on your skin they bite and it hurts like every bite really stings and now I have bites we're covered both in bites so I don't know how this night is gonna be but they can kind of uh, ruin the experience I mean you cannot relax when you have someone something biting your on your skin all the time and it's really itching We were anchored at the uninhabited island Sudedup, which is surrounded by mangroves and tiny islands. Exploring the mangroves. Luckily there was some wind, keeping the noceums away. It's really but, nice. Uh, full of trash. Yeah. Sadly. Sadly it is. But it's not only from the village, it's no. coming from Yeah, the whole Caribbean Sea, this is the end station. So sadly a lot of the trash that people throw in the water for the whole yeah, Caribbean basin, it ends up here on the beaches okay, of yeah. Panama. What do you think about San Blas so far? So pretty. So pretty and uh, like original. With indigenous people and they still live like they lived thousands of years ago. Maybe That's not thousands of years ago. Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds of years ago. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. On the way back to the boats, we pass Caledonia, which is the village next to Suledu. The houses have their bathrooms in small shacks above the water, making them self-cleaning. 
and it's quite interesting to see how different these people live to our Western society. Join us next week as we continue to sail the coast of Gunayala. Make sure to subscribe and if you liked the video we'd really appreciate a thumbs up.